Hockey action, the Devils are at the Florida Panthers, and the Pittsburgh Penguins are at the Flyers. And the Knicks take on the Miami Heat in a showdown at Madison Square Garden coming up at 1 o'clock. Ocean County weather from meteorologist Alan Casper, mostly sunny today with a high around 76 degrees. And then tomorrow it gets even better. It's a preview of summer as we start out the week with sunny skies, warm temperatures, and a high in the mid-80s. Right now we're at 68 degrees, going up to around 76 in Tom's River. I'm Joel Mahan, Radio Pup on your smart device. Keeps you informed at WOBM News. The opinions expressed on Topic A. 92.7 92.7 WOBM, Ocean County Traffic Watch. Well, this report is sponsored by New Jersey Transit. Not a bad ride on the Garden State Parkway, either way into the various toll plazas. We're we'll looking okay on 35. Uh, 37, got some ongoing construction in Seaside Heights. We're really not causing any major problems. And 9 and 70, okay. We're all on the front lines. If you observe suspicious activity, unattended bags or boxes on New Jersey Transit trains or buses, call 1 888 6 NJT. A moment's delay may be a moment too late. I'm Mark Leonard with the Ocean County Traffic Watch on 92.7. W-O-B-M. The opinions expressed on Topic A do not necessarily reflect those of the staff, management, or sponsors of Town Square Media. This is Bob Levy's Topic A, a Jersey Shore tradition for over 30 years on WOBM AM 1160 and 1310 and Ocean County's hometown station 92.7 WOBM. Now, here's Bob Levy. Okay, it's 10.05. I promise you a guest. I don't have a lot of uh, guests anymore. Uh, this is not a commercial uh, thing. I'm hold- in my hand. I'm holding a, a, a book that I that I I, I read in, in, with with absolute fascination. The name of the book is Fighting for Redemption. It's the Irish Teddy Man story. Irish Teddy Man, who was actually Theodore A. Manshrek, also sometimes known as Irish uh, as Teddy the Irish Man. And uh, yeah, fantastic. Let me, let me, uh, I, I haven't planned out what I'm going to do here. I, I, I didn't even think about it. I, uh, I have uh, Teddy here, who I'll introduce in a minute, because I think he might be the most interesting person on the planet, and it's not necessarily a compliment. Having said that, I'll give you a phony good morning. How, how are you? I guess I'm okay, and I seriously doubt that, what you were just talking about. Uh, well, um, anybody reads the book might come to the same conclusion. Uh, uh, one of the things that makes you uh, uh, what, I, what I said I think you are is the fact that you're alive. Now, you, what, did you just turn 60? Believe it or not, I'm 60, going Good. on about 75. Yeah, but there's no reason for you to be here. By, by, all, <laughs> by, by all measures, you should have died years ago. Okay? All right. Briefly, to my recollection, I first met you when you wandered in here to the radio station, almost near our inception. I don't know what year it was. How does 1970 sound to you? Probably back when I was in high school. Oh, you were in high school. 1969 or so. Okay, you went to Central Regional High School. You're a local guy. You were born here. I'm not going to say born and raised because I'm not sure you were raised at all. Um, <laughs> you, uh, <laughs> you, know, you know what I'm talking about. You wandered in here off the street one day. You had been running by. Running by because you were a, uh, a track guy. Right. Cross country guy, whatever. And uh, you, were the, uh, you were the outstanding member of the, uh, the team in Central Regional. Well, I was one of the outstanding members. Well, I, I'm going to say outstanding. You, you won an <laughs> award. Uh, you, you wandered in here, and as I recall, uh, you told the receptionist that you'd like to meet me. I used to do the sports back. Really? Then. I said that? That's what that's, uh, to my <laughs> reco- hey, to my <laughs> recollection. And, uh, so I said, well, bring him in. And, um, uh, you introduce yourself. And, and I got an immediate impression, or several impressions. Number one, I, 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 I was impressed. I thought you were extremely intelligent. I, uh, extremely soft-spoken and an extremely likable guy. <laughs> now, this has been, uh, the, the, maybe the thing that has gotten you to this point in life is that, uh, Throughout your life, you've been an extremely likable guy, in spite of the fact that you were also a very bad guy. Bad well, guy. I wouldn't say I was bad. Oh, I would say bad. I, I would say bad. You did bad things. Uh, um, you. Uh, let, let me ask you first. Um, you are an alcoholic, and I say, oh, I don't know if you're drinking or you're not, but as you know better than me that once an alcoholic, you're always an alcoholic. Hopefully, you're a recovering alcoholic. I don't know. I I, I don't know. I. I had no idea um, until I read the book that um, that you had done the, the 
incredible things you've done on the downside. I'm talking about negative things. I, I just had no idea. I'd see you from time to time. Um, I certainly became interested in you when you became a professional boxer. I watched, I guess, all your fights that were televised. I, obviously, I rooted for you. I swear you know him and, and uh, whatever. You, 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 you were good in the ring. But do you think that I had any idea that some of the fights I was watching, you had no business being in the ring? Well, I tried to keep that a secret from everybody. Even my ex-wife didn't know a lot of the stuff I was doing. Oh oh, wait a minute. The fact that you, you, you fought top-notch middleweights when you literally uh, sometimes didn't even know where you were. You went into the ring and fought these guys without having gone to sleep in, in who knows how long, out partying all night. You, uh, in addition to, uh, to, to, being, uh, to, 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 to having the capacity to consume incredible amounts of alcohol. Yeah, well, but believe it or not, I still walk around sometimes not knowing where I'm at. Well, hopefully <laughs> not for that reason, but you also, you got into drugs, you became addicted, uh, heavily cocaine, you even reached a, a point where you were mainlining heroin, and you would do all of them at the same time sometime, drink prodigious amounts of alcohol, uh, literally pack your you, nose. You with, know, you're starting to make me miss the past. You were I'm only kidding. <laughs> <laughs> hey, it was it was it was terrible. And um, um, what I guess what I guess I'd like you to do, and this is a human interest thing, uh, n not only for boxing fans, um, is is to give us a, like a, a synopsis or or a, a an abbreviated version of the book without giving it all away. I didn't bring you in here to promote your book. Um, I, I hope that there'll be some residuals and that some people are going to get this book. You'll uh, give you the opportunity to tell us, of, of course, we've got plenty of time, uh, where people can get the book and so forth. But uh, uh, I, when, I, when I first uh, uh, knew about this book, um, not that I believed it, I would bump into it. I bumped into it in at least a couple of years. It's been a long time before this book. That oh, you yeah. see in front of you. Maybe more than a couple of years. And like ten always, years. Hey, at least. Teddy, how you doing? Uh, bumping to you here, bumping to you there. Because, uh, uh, I, because again, I, I like to every, everybody, did, which is amazing. And uh, I said, "What are you doing?" Well, I'm, I'm, I'm writing a book. And I'm, I go, "Yeah, you're writing a book?" Because I never thought of you as an author type. And uh, um, you, 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 you said you were writing a book of your life. I never thought I'd be sitting here with you looking at this book, uh, but here I am. So I read the book, and uh, uh, you're, you're, you're a fascinating story. And again, uh, I, I said earlier, I'm sure I enjoyed the book, if enjoyed is the right word. I didn't, I'm not sure I enjoyed it, but, but I was, I was uh, absolutely absorbed in it. Part of the reason is that I met you when you were a kid. I found out in the book that I went to school with your uh, uh, bi biological father. You, you refer uh, uh, positively to an aunt that you loved uh, from Lakewood. And uh, I said, I know that name. Then I realized I went to school with her. And I remembered her with, uh, as, as a nice gal and other people, uh, this one and that one. And it's different when you're... Um, when you're uh, you know when you know somebody. So, right. so I would look I, I, about phone calls during this. Um, I, I, I guess we'll take some, but uh, uh, how? Who are we going to take? We have a caller on right now. Before you get started with your story, well, we'll, there's a button that I can push to he cut says him his, off the air. Right? His name? You don't want to. His name is Willie. He's from Annandale, and he says he fought you in the Golden Gloves. So, uh, so it's probably, put, put, put Willie on here. It's probably Willie Capuano. Right. Willie? Hey, hey, Teddy, <laughs> you remember me. It, it's Willie Capuano? Yeah. Okay. You, yeah, how are you? I'm okay. I'm, oh, believe good. it or not, I'm hanging in there. All right, Willie, what do you, what do you want to say to Teddy? Uh, I just want to say hello and... Uh, tell him I saw his fight with Robbie Sims just recently. I, I haven't never seen it before, and this, it was great. He almost had him knocked out. This guy actually he beat me in the Golden Gloves, and I, I think you went on to win. You won the Golden Gloves that year, right? I, I won that year. Yeah. What year was it, Willie? What year? Way, uh, way, way yeah, back when. It was in the seventies, but it was a close fight. Teddy, you're a tough guy. <laughs> All right, Listen. all right, Willie. You, you fought everybody. You weren't afraid to fight anybody. You never had any fear. 
Thanks, I appreciate that. So that's that. an understatement. Willie, did you, uh, uh, can I assume somehow you knew that Teddy was going to be on here today? I knew because my cousin John lives in Tom's River. All right, he let you know. All right, there, there you go. Well, keep listening, and we're going to hear uh, uh, about Teddy's uh, life uh, such as it's been. Or yeah. nonsense, you Great. can call it. All right. Thanks. All right. Okay. <laughs> Bye, Willie. All right, that was nice. Yeah, very nice. All right, now. I always thought he was kind of mad at me or something, but that's the way it goes. Let's go now. Bear in mind all your fights that I saw and rooted for you and so forth, and I met you. I never had a clue about what your life really was. Why don't you do a, a sum it up, starting with um, your kid in Central Regional High School and how you got interested in boxing and anything you want to say about your family, etc. Give us like a summation. Boy, boy, now this is, you're putting me on the spot Now, here. if you could write this, how many pages? 400? Believe it or not, it's 400, and I think it's got about 180 illustrations. Yeah, there. well, but, uh, so so I know it's uh, going to be tough to sum it up, but uh, in, in your words, tell us about your 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 often well, you know sorted what, life. The, the weird thing is, boxing was, I loved boxing since I was a little kid. And that's all I ever wanted to do. And then I, I got into, like, messing around with drugs and alcohol, among other things. And I, w I wasted six or seven years. And then I, I pulled it together after getting busted. And I did the boxing. All right. I had one little, I had a bright, shining spot. I'm you know, going to try not to interrupt you much. That's but all right. You say you wasted six, seven years. That or years that you should have been in your prime that right. you were, you spent in stir. Right. For what? Well, distribution of marijuana, a lot of different things. What was the big thing? Well, the big thing was... Uh, your big crime. Well, that was after the boxing career. That's... Oh, of course it was. Look, yeah, let's not get these I, mixed up. No, but Marijuana I, was the beginning. Yes, Bank robberies I were did, later. I did. <laughs> we're much, much later. And, and what I wanted to say, and, and then I'm going to try and just set my mouth, uh, I was stunned when I heard and you know, saw in the paper, it was a big story, that you had been arrested and charged with bank robbery. I, I couldn't believe it. Why couldn't I believe it? Because I really didn't know you at all. Yeah, all right. but now, it, go it, ahead. It wasn't me. Go ahead. I'm only kidding. I'm just being wise. Right. Yeah, I was involved in that. All right. So how did you get involved? In the uh, in the drugs and the uh, you well, know the, the drugs. drugs. I mean that was like way 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 back when. Where what would you call it? Peer pressure or whatever. I just started smoking pot and things. You know, just escalated right from there, just to keep going and going. And I'm like a curious person. I like to try things, and unfortunately, I tried things that I shouldn't have been trying. But I mean, I guess it was a good experience. I don't know. I wish things had turned out a little bit better. But you know what? You can't. You can't pinpoint how your life's going to turn out. Right. But like we, you said before, I'm still walking around. So, I mean, I got over a lot of people that I grew up with who are unfortunately six feet under, and I miss all of them. You know, and I, I always figured, man, some way I'm still walking around. Well, you're an enigma in that everybody loved you. In the end of your book, and again, here I'm talking again, where you give your acknowledgments, I've never seen acknowledgments like that in a book. You thanked everybody under the sun, including many law enforcement people who were trying to arrest you and help you at the same time. People were drawn to you. Young and old, uh, men and women, are uh, just something about you. Now, all right, so start from the beginning, your early years, uh, um, you know, your, what do you want to say about your early family life, which was not a happy time, and just take it from there. Now, go. Well, those things happen when you're, when you're younger. I, who, who has a real happy childhood, especially if you're coming from around this area or whatever? I don't know. One thing that I do know is that my grandfather used to watch the fights all the time, and that's how I sort of got into boxing, and that was like my one true love. Also, before I forget, you were saying everybody loved me. I, w I would have to say that my ex-wife and a couple former girlfriends probably don't share that opinion. Right, exceptions. But no big deal. But, uh, you know, the boxing was the highlight of my life, actually. Although this, this book is kind of cool, too. I'm, like, enthused about having a book out. I mean, not a lot of people have it out. <laughs> You're not hammering me like you were hammering your other callers and everything. No, I'm starting look, to get I'm, nervous. Uh, well, no, <laughs> hey, look, it, it is what it is. Um, you, you, you not only became addicted, you were a, you were a drug runner. 
Um, you were you were you sold it. Um, you you uh, you would drive down to Florida um, and uh, and pick up uh, sometimes 100 150 pounds of uh, a pot in your two suitcases and drive back. The number of times you were almost apprehended was almost like like you had a guardian angel uh, watching over you. I mean, it's just amazing how how many of those trips you've got away with and you enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. You liked the action. You liked the excitement. Of, uh, of making those trips. Well, no, and, I still find the humor in it. Yeah. And, and I think, I don't think I had a guardian angel. I probably had a little devil over my shoulders. And of course, and you made serious money. Yeah, that's for sure. Doing it. Did you, did it bother you at all? Uh, you didn't, in the book, it didn't seem that you, you had an awful lot of conscience about, gee, I'm, I'm, I'm breaking the law, I'm doing something bad. Well, who doesn't break the law? I go down the street every day and I see people talking on cell phones. I mean, that's breaking the law. Yeah, there's degrees, though. Right. right. Well, marijuana, to me, is it's still a joke. I mean, I find the humor in it. And, I mean, they should legalize marijuana in this country. I mean, give me a break. Putting people in jail for pot is ridiculous. Well, uh, I, I I agree, and I, and I think they have softened. Uh, and, again, I'm talking, I can't help myself. Uh, they, they've softened the stance on using recreational pot and so forth, but uh, uh, selling it by uh, 100, 150 pounds at a time is a, is a little bit of a different ball game, don't you think? I guess. Well, you know, the, you found out the hard <laughs> way. All right, so what should have been maybe the, the five best years of boxing, you, you were in jail. Yeah, right. off and on I was now, in jail. Yeah. You spent a lot of time in the Ocean County Jail. One of my you, favorite you, institutions. Yes, yes, and what did you refer to it as? Uh, my home away from home. And you gave it a name, though. The Hooper Avenue Hotel. Hotel. Yeah. yeah, and um, you, you charmed everybody in there, uh, fellow inmates, guards, etc. Uh, uh, they, everybody liked you. Well, I hope the warden, Teddy Hutler, appreciates the plug we're giving him. Well, you thanked him in your acknowledgments. <laughs> that he was... Well, you know what? The Hutlers, believe it or not, Mr. Hutler, Teddy's father, and his brother, Steve, they were like my earliest boxing fans. They used to go to my amateur fights. So I always remember them. They were always nice to me, and I always appreciated you know, their, their support. Mm -hmm. So you had no problem? Uh, you, you were going for a little stretch in the Ocean County Jail? You, you, you dealt with it beautifully? Well, I would go in there, and I would know everybody. Yeah. It wasn't like I was going in there... The way it would be nowadays, it would, I, I would go in there and I wouldn't know anybody, but way back when it was like half of my friends were in the place, so I would go in and it would be like old home week. All right. So, you, look, I'm going I'm to, I'm going to, I guess I'm going to help you along here with questions. Uh, you, you, you started fighting in the amateurs. You fought locally, a lot of guys. You fought in the Golden Gloves, and then you turned pro. All right? You turned pro. And at the time, you were you were uh, really drinking, uh, partying, uh, and and you know, that's the life of a professional athlete. I, you know, I just tried to live it up. All right, you started out amazing. <laughs> in, in 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 the book, of course, you reveal the uh, the ugly side of uh, professional boxing, and it's pretty ugly. I've always been a boxing fan, and so I I wasn't uh, naive in many ways. But uh, uh, you you. You you were start fighting professionally, uh, fighting professionally, and and you started with a real bang. Tell us about it. Well, I was behaving myself. The, the crazy thing is, I was in jail most of that time, and I, I had managed to get out on a work release program. I think it was Judge Huber, Judge Huber in Tom's River. He sent me from Tom's River down to uh, Bridgeton. I was at the Cumberland, Cumberland County Jail. And they would let me out every day, and I would do road work from the jail to my manager's bar. And then, then I go. So they kept me in there. So I was in really good shape for quite a while. I, in the beginning, when I first turned pro, I really thought I would get a shot at the world middleweight title. Unfortunately, sometimes dreams get squashed, and that's just the way it goes. But at least I got it in my background. I always wanted to be a fighter, and I did what I wanted to do. Yeah. So you were a conniver. Uh, yeah, you, you, conniver? I don't think so. I think so. Having read the book, and uh, <laughs> and uh, you you were an absolute charmer. I hope everybody calls in and says, Teddy's not a con conniver. <laughs> I don't think you get a lot of calls to that, uh, to that effect. Okay. Uh, uh, all right, so <laughs> y you started fighting and, and you started uh, knockout after knockout. Um, you had more than one manager in your career. Uh, most of them didn't turn out terrific. And, but you didn't, you, you were very easy in the book on, on people that had done you wrong. Uh, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't blame 
uh, uh, other people uh, to, to, to any extent to, 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 to make them responsible for you being what you were. You, 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 you assume responsibility for your own shortcomings, and there were many. And then um, you you started moving up. You started fighting. Uh, you started out as a four round guy. You went six. You fought some eight rounders, and and all of a sudden uh, uh, there you were fighting ten rounders against against some top notch fighters. Now anybody that was a fight fan certainly remembers Bobby Chez, um, <laughs> a Jersey guy who was a, a, a top notcher yeah. and who uh, prided himself on his good looks and. Um, you fought him, and uh, he, when he got, the fight was over, he didn't have good looks anymore. And I remember before the fight, looking at him, saying, "I'd like to change the way, change some of this kid's features." You and did. I'm pretty sure I did because he didn't look like like himself when it was over. No, you didn't look good either. He he actually uh, won the fight. I mean, he got the decision. Uh, you thought that you didn't. You never said that uh, you were robbed or anything, but you thought you thought it could have gone your way. You know, I don't like to cry too much about losses because we all have losses in life. But yeah, some of some of the ones I didn't win, I would say were pretty questionable. You yeah, know? I mean, that's box, but that's boxing. I mean, Chez, the promoters, you know, were his promoters. His manager was the, the father of the promoter. They had the judges here from Total. But this is just one instance. That's the way boxing is. Guess what? It, there's there's good and there's bad and. It all depends what kind of connections you have. And you found out when you went and fought a, 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 a better guy, a top guy, maybe that they were bringing up or that uh, maybe they were even thinking of as future champions. If you fought him in his hometown, you weren't going to win unless you knocked him out. Well, that was kind of the general consensus, but I would go there figuring I could outbox him. And I was kind of naive. I would, I would go, like, say, to Detroit, Chicago, uh, Boston, even Florida and stuff. I always figured, you know what, if it, if it goes a distance and I've done enough, I should get the decision. And I was disappointed quite a few times because, like I said, six or seven of those losses on my record should be W's. But it's a long time ago, and that's uh, the way it goes. You, you, you fought guys. Now, you got a fight with Robbie Sims, who was a really up-and-comer. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh, really, they were talking about him, future champion and so forth. And... Uh, <clears throat> You got into that ring. I think I got the right fight, where you were completely uh, under the influence of uh, of everything. Well, I don't know about everything, but I was under the influence of a couple of chemicals. You know. Yeah, you had been uh, you'd, uh, you'd been up all night the night before. Well, that now this is you're probably not you're probably referring to my last fight. My last fight was kind of like that. With the Sims fight, I was only on, I only did a couple of things. The last fight was a total. You only did a couple of things. What were what were a couple of what would, tell you what were a couple of things? Well, I would do speed a lot. Yeah, one of my favorites. Yeah, I mean, who couldn't like that stuff? But yeah. I mean, it's bad for you. And you were drinking heavily uh, that night before. Yeah, well, partying as you call yeah, it. Yeah, well, the casinos were were always uh, what would you call that? Fighter friendly. Yeah, of course. And and I've I've explain this to a lot of people when I split up from my ex-wife I realized that you know what I, I had been sort of tied down and once I got away from her it was like a everything was a party yeah and you would go through periods where you didn't train at all right. you would take fights on three days notice sometime we had done no training whatsoever my and training was done at uh, Duffy's friendly yacht barn well there you go <laughs> and you would you would uh, you would get into the ring sometimes and you talked about the flab hanging over your trunks yeah when you were particularly poor shape and uh, uh, like I'm in now yeah all right so you 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 can look back and say what if what if now um, I didn't know any of this stuff was going on I, 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 I uh, again though uh, people like you 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 were a prisoner in uh, Cumberland County and and the guards were your best friends yeah they liked me now they liked me because I beat up some of the other prisoners all right so you did this <laughs> you did this long stretch we're gonna go on that you did this long stretch now you were you you could be very cruel you could be a bully me but yes I, but I don't know about that only it was uh, uh, people that you bullied it seems were people that nobody liked okay bad guys you would you would uh, uh, not necessarily uh, 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 it wasn't physical. You would do mental things on them. 
to try and to try and break them. It was like it, you got pleasure from it, and but apparently, and I uh, still get pleasure. From all right, it, there, you, it there you go. <laughs> all right, now you uh, you were supposed to get out finally from Cumberland from this long stretch, and was it the day before or a couple of days before that, or the night night before you were supposed to be released finally, freedom, and there was a guy in there that was really annoying you. He was it, was pro really it was probably about two weeks or so before I was Okay, he was really bugging you, all right? And um, finally, you know, you, you you had, and probably still have this uncontrollable temper. And <laughs> uncontrollable is too strong of a word. Bob. It is? Yeah, it's well, not uncontrollable. Okay. I, can, I can control myself. Okay, well, <laughs> I, hope, I hope you do this morning. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh a couple of weeks or whatever it was, again, uh, I can't remember the detail from the, from the book. He got to you, and you beat him up. Well, he, he got to me by, I, had, I don't know what was going on, but there was a Dustin Hoffman movie on. I think it was called uh, Straight Time. Yeah. And Dustin Hoffman is one of my favorite actors. So I, I was watching it. They had, they had like these metal chairs. They're very, very uncomfortable. Anyway, this guy starts banging a, a metal coffee cup on the... Uh, Able, and I'm like, I'm gonna knock it off. I'm trying to watch the movie, and he just kept it up. Mm -hmm. So finally, I just got up. I, I wound up hitting him with a hook, dropping him. And then I don't know if you're familiar with it's called a mouse stretcher. I put him in like a double mouse stretcher. And I mean, wound yeah, up and I man, had, like, now from the book had to have like 14 or 15 stitches. An old friend of mine, Joe Polvano, taught me that move. I guess he learned it in Vietnam or whatever. Yeah. So they had to take him to the hospital, and yeah. you, you really you beat him brutally. All right. So now. You retire for the night in your cell, and you never slept a wink. You're laying there all night, and you're thinking, what have I done? What have I done? You're supposed to be getting out. Now you know you're not going to get out. You're going to be charged with this, and, 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 and God knows how long you're going to do. And in the morning, finally, the guards come and open up, and you're waiting for them to handcuff you and take you away, right? To yeah, I, I figured I was going to do another stretch for us or in battery yeah well instead what happened well, tell, I, tell us about the guards well i did a, i was actually doing a public service the guards all they were coming up to me like i thought they would put say teddy turn around put your hands out we're going to cuff you and then they they just started going you know what good work teddy we hated that guy i won't use the kind of language that they were using but they didn't like the guy he, he was a pain in the neck yeah so you never got charged no, no. They, 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 they covered it up. Actually, I got patted on the back as I was walking out. And even while I was running to the bar, I mean, I was like laughing my head off. And I, I, I figured, you know what, people going by in the cars are going to go, look at this nut laughing as he's running. But it was funny. Yeah. It was All funny. Right. All right. To me, it was funny. It was funny to him. It was not funny. Now, uh, I thought one of the highlights in the book for me was... Um, when you were inducted into the New Jersey uh, State Boxing Hall of Fame, something that you had aspired to for a long time, right? I, I guess. I mean, it wasn't something I would, you know, every day I didn't say, boy, I wish I could get in. No, it. but just, it was a, it was a, I mean, it, you were delighted a, when you heard that you had been selected. It's an honor to be in that. So, All right. you know, and it, it just, what would you call it? It just caps the boxing career where people can say, I was a halfway decent fighter. All That's right. all I all I look for. I wasn't no world champion. You know, maybe I wasn't a world beater, but I fought a lot of good guys. And guess what? I can live with that. I like that. All right. Now, it was a big event. It was where up in North Jersey? Uh, it was in Garfield. At the, it was a, a, a big restaurant called the Cameo. All right. The Cameo restaurant in Garfield. And you left by car. From, was it Manahawkin or Tuckerton? Uh, Forked River. All right, from Forked River. You went by car. Somebody drove, and you were in the back seat with... with Somebody you? we won't mention. No! Was it your <laughs> wife or your girlfriend at the time? It, it was my ex-best friend. Your ex-best friend. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> well, you, you, you drank all the way up in the back of the car. If Not I remember stuff. correctly, correctly, it was uh, peppermint schnapps. All right, peppermint schnapps, mm. and you did <laughs> cocaine, and uh, uh, that's where, where where you really I thought you really packed it in with the coke, and did I don't recall again? Did you do a shot of heroin before you got there? No, no, not at all. It was simply the drinking, the tremendous amount, and the cocaine. Well, you need you need the drink to like kind of calm your nerves from cocaine. I see. All right. Well, <laughs> at any rate. As he said in the book, by the time you got 
to the event. You, you, you didn't really realize what the event was and or where you were. Or am I, am I exaggerating there? No, not at all. If I remember correctly, I almost fell on my face right. walking into the place. Right. You were almost carried into the place, by kind of. whoever. And um, you you were seated on the dais, all right. <laughs> and you were almost comatose. And uh, you were seated with uh, uh, Chuck Weppner. The uh, the uh, heavyweight that was um, uh, so well known and uh, was was, um, was Bobby Chez on the, the he he wasn't inducted that year. he wasn't Mike inducted. Rossman was there Mike Rossman was big and there there sat Teddy uh, completely out of it waitress comes over right in the beginning as soon as he gets seated and asks if she can get you something. And what did you what did you say to her? If I remember correctly, I said from now on, whenever you come by, I mean, I started acting like a celebrity. Yeah, right? yeah. You know, I'm in the Hall of Fame now. I might as well play it. Yeah, up. yeah. And I said, do me a favor. When you come by me, bring me two drinks from now on instead yeah. of one. Right. And your drinks, your favorite drink was uh, vodka gimlet. Vodka gimlet. So wait, she, wait, wait, wait. You're gonna. I'm gonna have. Let me think. Where am I gonna go? I'm gonna have to go to the sawmill after this. Well, she gave you two <laughs> vodka gimlets and. Uh, and uh, you say in the book, the reason is that way you would, if you got two at a time, you'd never be without a drink. Right. So you started piling in on the vodka gimlets after you were already uh, almost comatose. Okay, now here's the Com kicker. Comatose is, I don't know, maybe inebriated. No. Inebriated no, might you're, be you're, you're, yeah, Believe me, according <laughs> to the book, you're a lot more than inebriated. Okay. Now, <clears throat> comes time for your induction. And uh, you're introduced, and it's now time for your remarks. Okay. Did you have to be helped to your feet, or did you get up? I kind of staggered to my you feet. Staggered to the microphone. Yeah. yeah, but my speech actually turned out pretty good. I mean, turned I, out pretty good. I yeah. had the crowd you actually the house laughing. Down. Yeah. You brought the house down. Well, I don't know about bringing it down, but at least people You're were being very clapping. modest. Yeah, well, uh, I am kind of modest. This, 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 this was you. Just, just astounding. So anyway, here now it's it's all these years later, and. Um, You've, you've written a book, which I, again, found fascinating. And uh, we're going to take a little break. When I, when I come back, I'm going to ask you about um, regrets and what could have been and, 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 and that, that kind of stuff. Okay. Because I, 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 I certainly, uh, I, I thought it was, it's obvious in retrospect now, not knowing about uh, all, all this other stuff, this baggage, uh, that you, you might, might, have uh, been the middleweight champion of the world. Well, I, I wouldn't go that far. All right, well, again, it was a tough time because you had uh, you had guys like Sugar Ray Leonard, and Marvin Hagler, and uh, and Tommy Ernst at the same time. Yeah. So, uh, but um, I think in the and certainly in the back of your mind, you, you you'd, you'd have to say, try and imagine yourself never having done the drugs, etc., uh, always being in shape, um, having led a a, a more normal life. Gotta be in the back of your mind that maybe, just maybe. I would say normal is always in, in my mind. I wish it had been a little bit different, but guess what? You can't, you cannot go back. And just like I say in that book, there's a lot of things I would change in my life, and boxing is at the back of the list. I, I, I've had a lot of tragedies in my life where I wish a lot of people were still walking around, and they're not. I mean, the boxing, I love boxing. I wish it had turned out a little bit different, but it's not. You know, it doesn't consume me. And you love people. I don't know about that. You love that. people, well, except for the people you hated. No, I don't hate anybody. Well, you were, you were the people that you didn't like. Right. And there were those, including uh, Sugar Ray Leonard, which... Uh, well, which I didn't I didn't. I, didn't I, him, did, did, I disliked him because he, he was like a hot dog. I disliked him. I always disliked him. Mm -hmm. And I, 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 I was kind of uh, captivated by the fact that you... You had nothing good to say about him, and and uh, my well, he, put, he put on a good show for people. He wasn't that all-American boy. He was like a real, I mean, in the, mean, in the back, mean. yeah, where people didn't see it. I mean, all the profanity and everything I've heard this guy spew. Yeah. I mean, he could hang out in Forked River, basically. I never liked him to, uh, for no other reason. He had the audacity to take the name Sugar Ray, and I thought that was audacious. I have to give him credit. He is an all-time great. I don't think he could ever beat Sugar Ray Robinson, but. He's he's an all-time great. You can't take it from him. No matter how much I dislike the guy, he was a great fighter. Well, he's great, but do you, do you think that maybe, uh, uh, do, I mean, agree with me on this, and I believe without a doubt that pound for pound, Sugar Ray Robinson is the greatest fighter there ever was. Absolutely. You agree with that? Yeah, I do. Yeah, I thought in the book you, you said you did. I saw him fight uh, Kid Gavilan. I was there. 
in Philadelphia, Memorial Stadium. I forget the size of the crowd. It was just, it was staggering. Okay, and Kev, Kid Gallon was a top man <laughs> fighter. The former and, two-time welterweight. Well, uh, Robinson came out for the 14th round after uh, the fight was won, and he decided to put on a little show. And he went to, he went to three minutes without raising his hands. They were hung at his side, and he danced. For three minutes, the crowd went berserk, and uh, uh, where Gavlin just came in at him and kept throwing that. He had a punch called he called the bolo punch, the bolo punch and he yeah. kept throwing that bolo punch. And never laid a hand on him, never missed his hair. So Ray Rose was just showing off, mm -hmm. and it was just it was something. You, you had Gavlin to was a, it, Gavlin is an all time great, and Robinson just handled him like a sparring. Like, it punch. was like yeah, it was like just a you know a night out, mm -hmm. just going through the motions. Terrific. Okay, <laughs> we'll be right back. Um, let me let me talk uh, as I do every Sunday here for a moment about uh, Corinne Jewelers, Ocean County Jewelers since 1964, where I have been telling you for almost that long, well, almost, that you can trust Corinne. How important is that? You can trust that a Corinne Jewelers with a third generation now and wonderful people that you will pay a fair and honest price for everything you buy. It's important. What do you know about jewelry? Probably not much. Can you appraise? I doubt it. Make a purchase in there, big one, little one, whatever, and leave confident that you paid a fair and honest price. It's the same thing with selling. Now, so many people are selling now their gold, their jewelry, etc. Trust Corinne. They'll pay you a fair and honest price. And Corinne is a full-service jeweler. They don't just sell and buy. They repair. They polish. They appraise. It's very important that you have your jewelry appraised because it might be worth a lot more today than it was, say, 10 years ago. So they do everything. They educate you. If you're going in there to buy a diamond, they, 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 they put the diamond under the glass and they let you look for flaws and they explain things to you. And they have knowledge. They, well, everybody says this, but they have people who have been working there for years that really know their stuff and that are really, really nice, patient, and they got a wide price range. They can fit any budget. I mean, maybe you got a little three-year-old granddaughter you want to buy. Go to Corinne. You can get a beautiful uh, Pandora bracelet for a song because it's a wide price range. They're Corinne Jewelers. Bottom line here is trust them. Okay? They're at uh, at they're on uh, uh, North Main Street, which is uh, just north of uh, 917 North Main Street, which is Route 166, just north of Route 37. They're open Mondays through Saturdays every morning from 10 a.m. Thursday evenings to 8. And you can find out more about it if you go online at CorinneJewelers.com. Trust Corinne. For years. You've searched every department store in town looking for the perfect gift, and it all just looks so generic. Then you remembered your friend telling you about Folio Art Glass. After just seconds in the store, you knew this was the place. It was filled with beautiful handcrafted glass gifts, jewelry, and mosaics. They had something for almost every occasion, and the owners have been designing one-of-a-kind pieces for over 30 years. Now when you need a gift for every season and reason, you know to visit Folio Art Glass on Route 34 in Colts Neck, online at artglassgifts.com. Thinking about the freedom of laser vision correction? Hi, this is Dr. Edward Hedea, New Jersey's recognized expert on no incision laser vision correction. That's right, no incision. In under 10 painless seconds, you too can see better. I have dedicated over 12 years to perfecting laser vision with no incision. For a free consultation, call 732-905-5600. That's 732-905-5600. Or visit EnvisionEyeCare.com. Found off on all things Ocean in Monmouth County. This is Topic A with Bob Levy on WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. And Ocean County's hometown station, 92.7 WOBM. All right, Bob Levy with Iris Teddy. Man, I'm going to apologize. Uh, we, we can't take any calls. We took uh, that one call in the beginning because of the guy that fought you in the Golden Gloves. And uh, we, 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 just don't, we just don't have time. Uh, all right, we're back. I got the book. Fighting for Redemption by Irish Teddy Man, the Irish Teddy Man story, and it's quite a story. And again, uh, I didn't ask you on here to help you sell books, although if you do, that's fine. Well, uh, maybe, I hope you don't mind, but uh, on behalf of, I know you'll like this, on behalf of Ron Rinaldi Sports Stadium, we're having a, a book signing at the Sawmill on the boardwalk in Seaside Park. This is a good place for uh, on, on, what is it, May 20th from 12 o'clock until 5, and 
Also, there will be the very popular DJ, uh, Dirty Curdy. There will be a, a buffet, delicious beverages, and probably the nicest bartenders on the uh, Jersey Shore. Yeah, okay. So hopefully everybody comes. And also, Ron Rinaldi said to give you his warmest regards. <laughs> <laughs> that's an inside joke. Kind um, of. Uh, yeah. Uh, okay, that's at the sawmill on the boardwalk at Seaside Park. Right. Yeah. Almost the heights. Close, on the, but on the border, on the boardwalk. Yeah. Everyone knows the sawmill. And the date again is? Uh, May 20th. What day of the week is that, you know? You know, I'm not sure. <laughs> it, could be a, it could be a Friday. It doesn't matter. It's from noon to five. You'll be there for a book signing. What's that old saying? Nothing matters. And what if it did, I think? All right, personalized book signing. Yes. All right, now what, uh, let's talk about the book for a moment before we, I ask you about regrets and so forth. Um, the book uh, can be gotten now where? Well, How? Can, How do you get the book? Well, you, you can go on uh, the internet, iristeddyman.com. If, if you go on that, you can order the book. Uh, it's also at, what is it, Wall Bombs. Uh, oh, is it? Yeah. Right now? Barnes & Noble. Oh, is it really? Well, if you order it, I think they go through the, the people that are published. Okay, how published. much is it now? It's, uh, well, $30. It's twenty nine ninety five. Yeah, well, I, to me, it was worth it. Uh, and I, I think... Uh, now, you know, if it wasn't worth it, I would have to get my bodyguard here to take care of you. I don't know if you know him, Scott Corcoran, a big giant of a guy. Let me say this to you. <laughs> Let me say this to you. At my age, I fear no man. Me either. It's too late. To, well, I, your bodyguard. He doesn't have to be a big guy. He could be... He could be your average ten-year-old uh, boy, and uh, he could certainly protect you from me. Probably mentally, we're both in that category. I don't know. All right, look. So what could have been is what could have been. Um, I, I, I certainly, I, 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 I didn't ask if you're if you're still drinking. Uh, if you're not, I, only to excess. Okay, well, you answer it, and uh, I, I, I certainly wouldn't uh, ask anything about drugs. Um, because uh, the, well, there isn't really anything to ask because I've been kind of straight for quite a while. You have? Well, so, what's what's quite a while? Uh, ten months. All right. I hope you I hope you can keep it up. Uh, I think just it's a, again the, the 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 your your amount of alcohol and drug abuse and the way you used to mix them uh, is to me uh, it, it's amazing that you're that you're even alive and in great shape. I mean, I'm I'm talking about mentally. Mentally, you seem to have it all together. One of my favorite sayings is "better living through chemistry." I don't know how true that is, no. but <laughs> I, yeah, yeah. You, you listen. You took some pretty bad beatings, uh, you know, and uh, uh, only once. Uh, we, I, we, this is interesting. I took worse beatings out on the street than in the ring. Right? Yeah, that, mm -hmm. it's all in the book too. But one fight where you didn't answer the bell for round was it was it the last round? I, I don't know. I had the two. heart attack. Were you? You were. That was my last fight. I think I didn't. That was your last fight. I didn't come out for the fourth round. The fourth. That was the only time. You because you were. Well, that was the second time that I didn't go the distance. I was. A, I didn't say go the distance. That, that you didn't. Come that, out. that you threw in the towel. Right. Because you were certain that you were having a heart attack. There was no that, that doubt in your mind that you were having a heart attack. Do you recall that? I, I definitely recall that like right, it was yesterday. Your heart and uh, and you uh, maybe caused by uh, what you had taken before the fight. Right, I would say it was definitely. There's no question about it. It was definitely what I was doing. Like I mean, I was partying right up until the weigh-in. As a matter of fact, in the book, I, I mentioned that a friend of mine. I, we were at Harris. He found me wandering around the hallways like the like two or three in the morning. Yeah, you're delusional. And, and he actually had to carry me back to my. Room and the yeah. girl that I was mm -hmm. with, he said, "You make sure he doesn't come out until the way." And, and the next night, you got into the ring with this, yeah, with this guy. <laughs> it's hey, listen, uh, it's, it's again that it, I, I, I found the book completely fascinating, complete, it's just, just absolutely fascinating. Well, I appreciate that. The fellow that helped me do that, Bill Brennan, he's a friend of one of the guys that was on the buzzards. And like I said, what you're looking at, he put the cover together and formatted everything. I mean, without him, this book would still be uh, in a closet somewhere. And, and yes, and you were, you were the most um, gracious uh, guy with opponents. And when you lost, even if you thought maybe you'd won, you'd, you'd not only, you know, congratulate the guy in the ring, raise his arm up, but you'd go, you'd go and visit him. 
in his dressing room or after the fight to congratulate him again. You just, a, you just, a, you're a totally gracious guy, and I, it's you, listen, it's it's gonna be your personality that just carried you through everything, and that people would 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 just draw to you. you know, I wish something like that would start happening to me nowadays. Well, you're hey, you're a charming guy, and I hope it'll be I hope it'll be a great uh, day for you at the uh, book signing at uh, the sawmill on the boardwalk again May twentieth between noon to five. You personalize. Sure. I mean, if I came with a book and say, Teddy, please write uh, to Bob. <laughs> For five or ten dollars, no problem. Okay. Uh, I talked <laughs> I talked about the acknowledgments, the pages. Now, now, that's kind of funny. I've had a couple of people say, probably we set a world record. It should be in the Guinness Book of World Records because I made so many acknowledgments. I put a lot of people in there, but it was just where I, I was going through a nostalgic trip. And I, I just remember a lot of people, and I just wanted to let them know that, you know, I haven't forgotten. Even if it's only for an instant, I remember people. It's, you, you, your recall, your recall is, is truly remarkable, particularly when, when so much of this stuff is when you were totally, totally under the influence of uh, alcohol, drugs, or, or a combination and, of and rock and roll. Yeah, oh yeah, we didn't mention <laughs> you're 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 a, a real music aficionado. Yeah. In fact, one of your robberies, uh, you 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 robbed all musical stuff. Well, that was a long, that was the Woolworths. Yeah, that was the Beachwood back, back when you were a kid. Actually, now now that you mention that, I don't know if you're going to get around to saying what I would like to do next. I would like to hopefully find three or four guys who are into music like Johnny Thunders and the Heartbreakers, the Ramones, Television, stuff like that. You know, like to form kind of a punk rock band, and I would like to front the band. As a matter of fact, I did it many, many years ago, but I'm a lot older now. But I'd still like to get back into it because I do love music. I mean, what what else is? I mean, music is it's happening. <laughs> Boy, you are something. I'm, I'm telling you, just uh, uh, I. I I, You're I, picking on me. I, My bodyguard Scott is going to straighten this out. I, I can't hear. get over you. Listen, you know, uh, <laughs> I, I said when I first talked about, um, uh, I bumped into you many times over the years, and, and uh, tried to avoid. One me, day, I, I, no, not at all. You know, I said every time we ever encountered each other, I always, I always left by saying. Teddy, meeting you today made my day. Now, always. Now I'm really getting the, nervous. Well, I mean it. I'm, I, it's, <laughs> it's, 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 it's the way you are. But I said, uh, I, I, I mentioned this. Fact, I said, I've known Teddy all my life. Or not all my life. Or almost all his life since he was a kid. It's been and, a long time. And then I, I found out. I read the book and I didn't know you at all. Well, everybody has, what would you call it, skeletons in their closet. Maybe not as many and as varied as the ones I have. Yeah, well, but everybody has something. Oh. They don't want to come out. Yeah, but uh, yeah, I mean, your closet—it it, it got full. The um, the uh, uh, back then in that period of wildness here, um, I was out and about a lot back then. But I guess I just didn't frequent the same places you did. I mean, you named a lot of places that uh, your hangouts and whatever. And I, I guess um, I I just was going other places. It was a long period where well, I like to go to kind of what would you call the more rougher spots, like the degenerate bars. Well, I, I'm. I've always told people, I said, I don't like the way they've changed all the bars to, like, yuppie hangouts. I wish they could go back in time to the bars that were a, a little more rougher. Nothing to do with anything. i got to ask this quickly. Do you remember a bar years ago, back in the 70s, in Point Pleasant off of Arnold Avenue, like down an alley? It's not a bar. It's like a pool room. Do you, do you any of you recall uh, that? Yeah, I, I remember. It, it was on a cur There was a curve. I think. I think so. But I, it was called the Village Inn, probably. So, no, 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 no. Okay, then more to a town, like uh, in the middle of town almost, down an alley. All I know is somebody took me there one night. They wouldn't stop, they wouldn't stop in there. Whatever. And I, I went there and I said, listen, I've, I, I've been to a lot of rough places and whatever. Like, I said, I want to get out of here. Because for one thing, I was dressed. I was like dressed up, you know. And uh, what was, I was the only person that was dressed up. And it was really a rough place. I thought you might... I thought you might recall it. Well, there was a few bars in in Point Pleasant. Well, I'm sure you know all. You know mm -hmm. all. Not all of them. All but right. I know a good portion of them. Irish Teddy Man, I enjoyed this. I hope you did too. And uh, we'll be we'll be back to wrap this up in just a couple. Call Bob Levy now at 732-237-WOBM. That's 732-237-9626. More of Topic A next. <laughs>
on Ocean County's hometown station, 92.7 WOBM and WOBM AM 1160 and 1310. See ya. Are you looking for Ocean County's one-stop outdoor resource? Look no further than the Jersey Paddler in Brick. All your favorite gear, hiking boots, dry suits, outdoor clothing, camping equipment, and more from the biggest names in the business. You still have plenty of time to enjoy the outdoors, and the Jersey Paddler in Brick is stocked with everything you need for the outdoor adventure of a lifetime. Visit the Jersey Paddler at the intersection of Route 88 and Route 70 in Brick and online at jerseypaddler.com. The Jersey Paddler, everything connected with the outdoors. Master Peter Funeral Homes of Union and Ocean Counties have been family owned and operated by the Master Peter family since 1940. Their founding father, P. Arthur Master Peter, passed his business to his sons, stressing that caring, compassion, and treating every family as their own are paramount to their business. The only marketing tactic they use is honesty and fair trade, the cornerstone of Master Peter Funeral Home. And this belief has now carried on to their third generation of family funeral home professionals. For over 71 years, Master Peter has been a trusted name. Now, as always, they are devoted to assisting you during the loss of a loved one. You can be sure that Master Peter Funeral Home will accommodate you and your family in any way they can. With dignity, respect, trust, and pride. Master Peter Funeral Home. Located at 270 Route 9 in Bayville and 400 Feytoot Avenue, Roselle Park. Hi, I'm Bob Levy. Did you know that a transmission preventative maintenance service will help your car get better gas mileage? Well, it will. Watch the transmission guy in Tom's River wants to remind you to have your transmission service as the seasons change. Mark doesn't want you to have transmission problems. I know this. I know him a long time. Mark offers a $39.99 service for most cars, which includes a road test, an electronic scan, and filter and fluid or extra. This could save you big money down the line. That's Mark, the transmission guy in Tom's River on Charles Drive, your transmission expert. Mark's transmission auto repair has been fixing cars and trucks for over 30 years. Call Mark, the transmission guy in Tom's River at 732-244-7300 or stop by and see him at 911 Charles Drive in Tom's River. Mark's transmission auto repair. Same old guy, just a new name. Back to Bob Levy's Topic A on WOBM AM 1160 and 1310 and Ocean County's hometown station 92.7 WOBM. All right, Iris, Teddy, Theodore, man, Shrek, man. <laughs> uh, I, I, uh, for me, I don't know about you, you talk about an hour flying by. Yeah, it did go by. I quickly. can't believe it again. I That's apologize. The way my life has been going by. I, I snap your fingers, and it's sixty years going by. Before we go off, I, just one thing I need to add. I'd like to thank everybody at the Ocean County Library, especially Nancy, for helping me to, you know, or letting me hang out there so often when I was, you know, editing the book and everything. Yeah. <laughs> like, what were you doing in a library? I know people would say Teddy Mantrick in a library. Give me a break. Yeah. But I, I like libraries, and I like to read a lot, believe it or not. All right, look, we didn't skim the surface of what's in the book. And again, I, I, I'll fess up. There's a, a lot of pictures. In fact, uh, there's a picture of me with you in here. And, uh, and uh, I, I see that one of your workers has it on his dartboard here. Is that well? I wouldn't be surprised. <laughs> and uh, again, the, the, the book is fascinating. It's uh, Fighting for Redemption, uh, the Irish Teddy Man story. Uh, written by you with the help of uh, William Brennan, William who you give plenty of credit to. And uh, you'll be having a book signing on May 20th at the Sawmill on the uh, boardwalk in Seaside Park from noon to 5 with uh, personalized uh, uh, autographing of the book. And you said refreshments and a, a, a DJ. A and a, and, a, and a, a, a good time day. Right. A good time day. I think the Sawmill always uh, creates a good day, no matter what. Yeah, you, know, you got a lot of friends. You're hey, you're an ex-con. Uh, a a a a dude. Uh, uh, Thanks they, for the compliment. By, I, listen, I really are. appreciate that. By, hey, Make by, sure everybody out there knows that. Lock your doors. By your own time. admission, you did awful things. Uh, awful. I don't know about awful. Yeah, I'm telling you, I think they were awful. Really? Well, yes, and I think I think most people would. But well, it's, you know what? We probably come from a different world. It's a fast. Uh, I hope so. <laughs> it's a, it's a, no, I don't think anybody comes to your world. It's a fascinating read. 
and uh, again, I, I hope you'll do it. And I and, and I love you. I always have. I, I and uh, and uh, luckily for you, that's the way most people have reacted to you. Uh, or you could have had a lot worse of a life than you had. Hey, good luck from here on out. Like I said, it hasn't been a cakewalk. No, yet. nobody's life is. Maybe it's going to take off. And I hope you stay. Uh, I hope you stay. Well, free. You know. Are we getting cut off? Yeah, we well, of course we gotta go. Okay. Sorry about that. And that's another edition of Bob Lee's topic A for better or worse. And uh, I hope you enjoyed this, this last hour. I didn't get to say good. goodbye to everybody. Yeah, I will say goodbye fast. <laughs> Have a nice day today. I'll see you at the tavern. There you go. Okay. Uh, <laughs> and uh, we'll I'll be back tomorrow morning as usual on uh, AM with Bob Mary in the morning starts at six. Otherwise, I'll be back here next Sunday. Thanks for listening. Thanks for calling. I appreciate you all. And I hope you all enjoy tomorrow. What a beach day. So long, everybody. Eleven sixty WOBM Lakewood Township, thirteen ten WADB, Asbury Park, and Ocean County's news leader, ninety two point seven WOBM FM Towns River, a Town Square Media Station.